This one goes out to anyone who's ever offered me money for my shadow ghost. Of course the answer is no, but in today's video we're going to walk you through how to build your own shadow ghost. And by build, I mean buy off of Amazon, because I feel like you maybe haven't given them enough money during lockdown. But that's what we're looking at today, but make sure you stick around to the end of the video for details on how to enter a giveaway to win a free month of Shadow Boost. But firstly, Mark, why would I need to build my own Shadow Ghost? Well, in all of its glory, the Shadow Ghost has proven difficult to keep in stock. But let's take a step back. What is the Shadow Ghost? What does it do? And do I need it? So the Shadow Ghost is an optional device, which will allow you to plug your gaming peripherals like your mouse and keyboard, up to a monitor or a TV, and that will allow you to stream your Shadow Virtual Machine. So to answer one of the most common questions I get, do I need the Shadow Ghost? Uh, so like I said, no, it is an optional device. Uh, essentially, if you already have an existing PC, laptop, phone, tablet, uh, you can just easily download the Shadow application appropriate to that device, and you're on your way. So the Shadow Ghost is essentially for people who don't have any of those spare devices that they want to run Shadow on, or they could be looking for a minimalist and energy saving setup like this. But ultimately the Shadow Ghost is just the physical interface between you and your Shadow Virtual Machine. Plugging in all of your peripherals, it's playing the part of the middleman, sending all of those input signals up, and then decoding the stream as it comes down. So if I can't get a Shadow Ghost because of stock issues, what are my alternatives? This little guy is called the Wintel Pro. I said Wintel with a W. Uh, I have a link to it in the description down below. Uh, but this little guy comes with Windows 10 pre-installed, a whopping 1.44 gigahertz quad-core Intel Atom X5 Z8350 processor, an unbelievable two gigs of RAM, an earth-shattering 32 gigabytes of storage, and yes, I'm being sarcastic. Uh, Specification-wise, it is not that impressive. But that's okay, we're not actually that interested in the specification of the Wintel Pro, we're more interested in its body. I know how it feels. So yes, yeah, so all we're actually worried about is, is it powerful enough to run Shadow? And can I plug all of my peripherals into it? Because the idea is, once we've got Shadow installed, you'll barely even see the Windows interface at all. It will just jump straight into your Shadow session, much like the Ghost does. So let's do a quick rundown of the features of the Wintel Pro compared to the Shadow Ghost, just to see how it stacks up. Because there are lots of versions of these micro PCs available online, and I'm not saying this is the absolute best one on the market, it's just port for port, feature for feature, when compared to the Shadow Ghost, this one came up the closest, especially for the price. So some of the most crucial features which both of these devices have in common, they both have a HDMI port to plug in, monitor, or a TV. They both use dual band Wi-Fi, which means if you're using the devices wirelessly, 2.4 or 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi will work. So I'd always recommend 5 gigahertz. Uh, they both have an ethernet port, and above all else, uh, I would recommend ethernet over Wi-Fi anyway. They're both Bluetooth enabled, uh, both come with an audio jack. Where we see a slight difference is the Ghost has two USB 3.0 ports and two USB 2.0 ports, whereas the Wintel Pro has one USB 3.0 and one USB 2.0. Actually, some additional ports which the Wintel Pro has, which the Shadow Ghost does not, a micro USB port and a micro SD port. So, you know. Do with those what you will. And finally, the price uh, when the Shadow Ghost is available, it retails for £109 or $139, whereas the little Wintel Pro is available on Amazon for £90.90, pence, some reason, or $109. So yeah, port for port, it's stacking up pretty impressively other than a few less USB ports. But if you're like me and you're using 100 different peripherals, I would hope you're just using a USB extender block anyway. So enough talking, we're gonna swap these over and see if I can get the exact same experience from the Wintel Pro as I can get from the Shadow Ghost. So painful Windows 10 setup out of the way. We're into the local Wintel machine. Um, 
First off, all the peripherals working fine, which is a good sign that it's even powerful enough to run stuff like lit up keyboards. But yeah, mouse is fine, keyboard, God, that was slow. Um, and all we've got on this version of Windows is uh, a copy of Microsoft Edge. Yeah, it's still brave enough to ask you to be its default browser. So literally the only thing I want installed on this local machine is the Windows version of Shadow. So let's go ahead and download that now. So we've got the latest version of the Shadow Launcher installed. Like I said at the start, I want to see the bare minimum of this actual local version of Windows as possible. I wanted to act like my Shadow Ghost and jump straight into the Shadow instance as soon as possible. This did used to be an option within Shadow. It has disappeared. Uh, it would run on Windows Startup. However, without it being uh, in shadow anymore, we can still get around it with a window setting. Super easy to do. I'll leave a link in the description which goes into more detail, but essentially uh, we're just doing the run command, typing shell colon startup, and that brings up the startup folder. As the name suggests, this is a folder full of programs that Windows knows to run on startup. Right now it's empty, which is right because there's nothing else installed on this local machine. The only thing I want it to do is run shadow when this box starts up. And to do that, I'm simply just pasting a copy of the shadow launcher shortcut into the folder. Next, I'm just gonna enter my login details into the launcher and I'm gonna select stay logged in. Again, that's just another step that it will do automatically when this little box starts up. And this is literally the final step. This is the start now button that I would usually get every time I turn on the ghost. And this is the situation I want it to be in every time that I just turn on this box. Uh, unfortunately, there is no way to make this full screen so that you only see the shadow launcher. So just so that I don't have to uh, think about that it's actually running a crap version of Windows in the background, I've just changed the background color to match the launcher. I thought it was pretty sneaky. So we're just gonna test all of that works now by shutting this down, turning it on, and making sure that when it turns on, it gets us to this exact state the same way the ghost would. And then here we are back in my regular shadow session, no ghost required. There was one additional step which I did accidentally forget about. Again, I'll leave it in the description down below to get straight to that launcher. If you don't want to deal with the uh, Windows logon for Wintel, there is a step just to disable that. Pretty easy, but here we are. So again, all my regular peripherals go into a USB extender hub. They're all going into the Wintel Pro. It's still pain to me to say that name. Um, but yeah, all of them are still fine. It will be picked up. Uh, they're being forwarded via USB over IP to Shadow. So mouse is fine, keyboard is fine. Importantly though, two of the major selling points of the Shadow Ghost compared to its predecessor, the Shadow Box, was the addition of Bluetooth and dual band Wi-Fi. So those were two aspects I was very keen to make sure worked just as well on the Wintel Pro. So first up, no issues with the Wi-Fi, uh, starting the Wintel Pro with the Ethernet cable unplugged, then just going into the Wi-Fi settings to connect to my five gigahertz signal and starting up shadow as normal. So in doing this, I only saw a slight performance difference. Uh, but as I've mentioned before, I do have a down speed of around 350 megs. Um, I'm also only about one social distance away from my router. Uh, I can't imagine the antenna range in the Wintel Pro is anything spectacular. So as I would always recommend, if the option is there, connect via ethernet. Moving on to Bluetooth, uh, again, no issues on this side of it. Uh, I used the wireless Xbox One controller and first connected it via Bluetooth to the Wintel Pro locally. Then once Shadow was started up, this was forwarded and I could see the controller in the Shadow Quick menu. One last thing to note, uh, to get the gameplay running smoothly on the Wintel Pro uh, in the Shadow Launcher, you need to turn on a setting called Low End Configuration Optimization. As the name suggests, this fixes any performance issues on low end hardware and we're pretty safe to classify the Wintel Pro as low end. Turning on this option does prevent you from accessing the shadow quick menu, so it would stop you changing things like your bandwidth while you're in your session, uh, but these aren't things you should be changing that regularly anyway, you usually set and forget, but if you did need to do that, you just close down your session, do it from the launcher, and restart. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the results of this test, proving we can replicate the functions of the Shadow Ghost, albeit a bit more fiddly and in a less sexy package. So for anyone who's been desperate to get your hands on one, that is the Shadow Ghost alternative. As I mentioned, link for the Wintel Pro will be in the description down below, but I think it's a great example of the type of obscure and honestly inexpensive devices that Shadow's capable of running on. But now we wanna hear from you. So if you've ever wondered if something you already own is capable of running Shadow, here's your chance to find out. Be it a tablet, an old laptop, a potato computer, or 
an actual potato. <laughs> Simply post your picture of an obscure device or random item to Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag ItRunShadow for a chance to be automatically entered into a giveaway to win one free month of Shadow Boost. That giveaway will run for two weeks from today and as I mentioned, simply using the hashtag ItRunShadow automatically enters you. But that's it from me. So if you enjoyed this video, I found it somewhat helpful. A like rating would be appreciated. If you have not already, remember to subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications. Hope everyone's staying safe out there. And as always, I shall see you in the next one.